in trying to break it down unless you're trying to write a sketch or something. So yeah, um, we've got, all right, we have one, okay, 49 suggestion so pick a number one to 49 i'm gonna pick my favorite number which is 11. <gasps> all right number that which used to be a number i would wear in baseball when i was a kid growing okay. up playing baseball yeah i wore 11 a lot uh two four six seven eight nine, ten. okay so this comes from michelle gilliam do you know michelle yeah we're on we're on a course together at the moment oh well, this is and Michelle's a great teacher anyway, isn't she? But yeah. um, we're doing she, that, a back to basics course. It, it's really, it's really good. Yeah, Michelle's lovely. She's a very talented improviser, isn't she? Oh yeah. I mean, she's one of my favorite to play with for sure. And she's yeah. a great teacher, a great coach. Uh, and she gives <laughs> great, she gives such great suggestions too. Um, uh, her suggestion is mark my word, mark my word. Okay. Thanks, Michelle. Mark my words, no good will come of this. No. Last time. I mean, you nothing good comes after midnight, and definitely nothing good comes from drinking after midnight. Oh. No comes of No good comes of you arriving after midnight. You're the new butler down here, aren't you? Yeah. At highbrow, uh, highbrow manner. If whatever, I mean, I'm, if you want me to, to stay, I'll stay. If you want me to go to whatever you want me to do, ma'am. Well, I'm Emily the cook. Oh, oh okay. Harold the gardener. Hey, Harold. Nice to meet you. So you're an American? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I'm American. My, my parents are both British. My parents are from Leicester. Um, and Leicester. so, yeah. So that's interesting. I've, you've never met an American, not around these parts. Oh, do you have a question? I'm, I, I can try to answer as best I can to represent America. Well, we were interested in, um, here in the, I'm a cook, so I'm really interested in what Americans um, have to eat. Lots of butter, lots of fat, lots of sugar, and extra large portions. Now, I'm trying to actually cut down. I'm glad you asked that. I'm trying to cut down on my portion size, but I, I still tend to eat a lot more. Yeah. Well, I think here we'll probably put a bit more meat on you. You look like you've lost a bit of weight, maybe. Well, thank you. I've, I've been trying to exercise a little bit more. I, you know, I'm, I'm 29. And so 30 is right around the corner. And I've been doing a lot of life searching right now. And I'm like, uh, what should I be doing with my life? Definitely should be getting into shape. And so yeah, I've cut out a lot of dairy in my life. Yeah. Okay, we use a lot of dairy here in the kitchen. I mean, this is a, a stately home, of course. So, you know, we hunt uh, our meat and we use our dairy cows to make cheese right on in the, in the grounds here. Yeah. So we have a lot of dairy. Um, so you went to Butler School? Yep, yep. Uh, I went to, um, I actually spent a year in London. I went to the Royal uh, Butler Academy, the RBA. And uh, I, I spent uh, three years after that, I, I worked for a very prestigious director in the States. I, I can't really say who it is out of confidentiality, um, but when he ate, um, you could really see his jaws. Nice. Uh, he, um, he, he used to um, really want to phone home. Oh, that was interesting. So, um, so he had like, he had a problem with, identifying with films and that um he he um he loved to 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 um make lists if you know what i mean um he he would make up a, a list for our friend uh frank schindler oh i see but again i can't say the name but he was a very a very known hollywood um, celebrity who was in the film industry. 
Oh. He was very particular too. Brilliant. So, um, I we I mean the only thing I know about Hollywood. It was Steven was Spielberg. It was Steven Spielberg. Ah, I shouldn't. Ah, that's. I I was trying to hint around, but I'm like I and I'm and I shouldn't so, be breaking confidentiality. But it was it was Steven Spielberg. He. So yeah, uh, Jaws we, was a, a stretch of a reference. Apologies. We don't watch films and we don't watch yeah. films. We're too busy working our fingers to the yeah. bone. Um, Makes sense. Makes sense. You know, I mean, this is a feudal system of running here in this um, in this manor house. So. We don't get to watch TV. We don't see films. So I don't even know who Steven Spielberg is, this guy or any of the films. In in America, our, our celebrities are treated like royalty. That's our royal family is, is ah. celebrities. So we we don't have a, you know, as you know, we don't have a royalty in, in that sense, but ah. we, we tend to treat people who are in entertainment or sports as royalty. So that's it's probably, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine and uh, they, they thought that the Kardashians, which is a, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a, a celebrity family in the States, is closest to the, to the royal family that, that we have. And I think for a long time it was the Kennedys were pretty much like the American royal family. I, I'm boring you with this. You, and I've, in, I've interrupted. So yes, please, please. Um, is, I mean, is there anything I should know? These are fascinating facts. We don't have TVs. We don't have any contact with the outside world in this in this stately home. We have no idea what happens outside. Okay. We just like work here, and you know, we get fed here, we sleep here, we work here. We don't see anything from the outside. So you're the first person I've actually seen since our last butler um, went missing. I was going to ask if you don't mind. Like there was, it was some mysterious circumstances. Mm. surrounding Mr. Peter, so. Yeah, Mr. Peter was a really good butler. He was a fabulous yeah. butler, to be honest. But um, yeah, when you came along, we were hoping things would be different. Tell me how, and I can make sure that I, I help them be different. Yeah, I think they need to see us downstairs as human beings, to be honest, mm. you know. I mean, we're not objects to be used and, right. uh, you know, or hunted. Oh, well, I'm, uh, I, I, I got what you're saying there. And uh, wow, I'm glad I did get into, my, this is my prime shape right now. So uh, I'm really looking to do anything I can to serve, um, to serve the Lord and lady. Well, I mean, I think you probably best get yourself out of here if, uh, if you have any sense of I'm being honest with you. Isn't that right? Yeah. Oh. Because, you know, I'm, I'm saying that you're in danger is what I'm saying. Okay. Um, um, wow, okay. Uh, then my, my instinct is to, to leave. However, I, I think, oh, oh, it seems like I'm, <laughs> if you'll pardon me, I'm being summoned. Um, be, yep, uh, summoned. that's, that's, that's for me, but, um, give me one moment. I want to see what, what, uh, this is about one moment. If pardon, excuse me for one. Okay. Uh, yep. That, that, that sounds good. Okay. Um, that's good. Okay. Well, uh, it, hey, listen. It was um, it was really nice to meet meet you. Uh, um, I would shake your hand, but as you can tell, obviously, I've been <laughs> I've been tied, uh, and uh, I I was told the fun is about to start, and so um, oh oh now okay. Well, um, hey, uh, I'm <laughs> I usually say this is an empty parting, but I I do hope I see you again. Uh, is what is what it okay. Um, and, and okay, uh, I'll hang on one second. Just give me one moment. Pardon me. I'll be right back. Okay. Uh huh. Yep. All right. Um. Uh huh. Um. Uh, okay. Um. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. So uh. Yep. You're it, right? 
Uh, yep, that that's something they, they said. Just it's it's very interesting. There, there's a lot of laughing, and they're saying that this is just part of uh, how they welcome me. So I'm very excited right now. The initiation initiation ceremony for all servants here at the house is uh, very unusual, but you just have to run with it. Do whatever the lady asks you to do. I mean, I, I I'm going to run as best I can. It's more of a hop right now because I've got. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. You know what's funny is like I I would want to say oh they didn't teach me this at Butler School but they absolutely did teach me this at Butler School so I I don't want to brag but I think I'm in I think I'm gonna do pretty well. Uh, could you just put the the gag back in my mouth right there if you could just uh huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so um I guess I did you a do um it's very nice to meet you. Um, I'm very excited to be part of the family here. Um, and feel free to reach out to me at any point uh, because uh, this is something I'm here. I'm in to serve. I, my parents like to serve, and I'm in to serve as well. Um, so uh, I uh, okay. So um, I will be back. If, uh, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I'll be back. Okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 It's absolutely crazy that foot one. See. Ah, uh, a. Uh, I would really enjoyed the direction of that scene. Uh, <laughs> Uh, B, have you, um, my experience to watching like the British class system, I think like uh, most of Americans, it's a lot of influence by Downton Abbey. Oh and, yeah. And before that, there was, what was, there was a, there was another film before that, but I think Downton Abbey for us is a lot of like that's, and I do believe that the, the, the American royal family is celebrity. I think that's what we bow down to here is, is yeah. like celebrity. And that's who we think, you know, for us, that's, that's the royal family. Mm. Yeah, I think you're right. I think, um, yeah, it's a completely different, different thing, isn't it? But yeah, yeah I mean, I couldn't like, I couldn't name you any of the Kardashians. I don't know anything about that sort of thing at all. I don't, I don't look at any of that. So people well, who are supposed celebrities, I, I, I don't even know who they are. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, it's funny. It's like these people in the States become celebrities, but you're, 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 you're like, why, where do they, like, why is this person, what are they, it's not like they're known for an excellence in a, tra a craft or a trade or something. It's just like, they're known for being known. Yeah, and yeah, reality TV um, is far too popular, unfortunately, in, in my opinion. <laughs> well, yeah. you're not known I, for difference, are you? <laughs> I, I just never got why, for me, like friends of mine who are actors who like to watch reality TV, because I'm like, they're taking, they're taking your job. Like your job as an actor is to, that's what you're striving for. But now they're hiring people with like no background because it's cheap and they're making them the celebrities and they're making they're giving them the work. And so I never understood when I had friends who really enjoyed uh, um, any sort of reality TV because I'm like, man, that's that's a gig you should be doing that time frame, whenever that is on TV. That's your job. So, yeah, I, I've never really been a big fan of like any sort of reality shows myself. No, um, so, no, no, go ahead. Don't. No, it's okay. Did you watch any of the highlights from Oprah Winfrey interviewing Harry and Meghan? Have you seen any of that? That was like last night, I, I think. I, I, I haven't even watched. I don't even know what. what I have, I've been writing my book, so I haven't even watched TV. I've, I've only seen news feeds on Facebook slightly that there's something going on, but I'm not interested in the royal family, but obviously something's happened. I don't even know what that is. Um, I know that there's been some commentary about racism, but I haven't looked at the interview. I don't know um, exactly what's going on, to be honest. Yeah, um, I I haven't followed it. I know that there was some interview with Oprah Winfrey with Harry and Meghan, and I'm sure it's some sort of discussion. But but I want to steer our conversation to that book. What book are you writing? 
Oh, I'm, I'm actually writing a Western. Um, have you have you written books before, or is this the first? Not really. No, it's the first thing I've tried. So I've, I'm not, I'm probably two two thirds through it. So I've just got a little bit left to do. I'll probably have it finished in four weeks. But um, yeah. <laughs> are are you? Do you set a time to write every day, or do you write in like chunks and pieces? I only write when I feel um, I've got. I'm inspired otherwise I just write a load of rubbish so um if I feel like writing I write if I don't feel like writing then I don't write because it's not worth it so you've got to be in the moment I think when you're writing it's funny I had a, I had a friend who uh wrote he's written a couple like improv books and he says for him his writing his habit or his pattern seems to be just write the first draft. He's like, I just write the first draft and I assume it's just gonna be the worst thing ever. And then I can go back and refine it. And no, I'm don't like, put any pressure on yourself, yeah. The whole thing is you don't put pressure on yourself. Um, get the story down and then go back, back through it to add the icing on the cake is the thing. Oh, that's great. Um, what got you into improv? What made you start uh, taking a class or doing shows? Yeah, so it was about four years ago. So I, start, I um, was feeling a bit depressed, to be honest. So uh, I thought I'd try something that would be, um, you know, completely different to anything I've done before. Because I've worked in a hospital in intensive care, and I've just stopped doing that recently in the past four weeks. Um, so I just felt I needed something that was completely and utterly alien to what I, I normally do. So I have no background in performance or any anything whatsoever like that. So um, I pitched up at Liverpool Comedy Improv drop-ins um, and just laughed for two hours for the first time in forever. That's run by Emma Bird. Um, yeah. So I just went there regularly over the past few years. Um, I've not been in any performance things in particular apart from showcases of them and stuff. But um, yeah, and since the lockdown I've just been doing zoom sessions and some um some um courses really to improve my improv because I'd say I'm not a I'm not a a performer of improv I'm um, a student of it at the moment I'd say is the thing wow I'm I feel that I'm also a student of improv mm -hmm. as well and I feel like you you kind of always I feel like the, the ones who have that that open mind and spirit will always view themselves as still a student no matter how long you've you've been doing it yeah i mean coming on here with you was was pushing myself to be honest <laughs> really <laughs> yeah i mean i i had to test myself a bit because if you if you're just in your comfort zone all the time, you never develop, do you? So I yeah. think you develop when, when you put yourself under stress, um, whether it goes well or, or doesn't go well. It's all, it's all learning, isn't it? Um, oh. And helps to improve you. So yeah, and it's having to put yourself uh, in positions where you, know, you wouldn't normally put yourself and then you, you know, you're just going to gain gain from it at the end of the day, aren't you? Well, I mean, that's that's spot on. It's like you you only grow getting out of your comfort zone. And a lot of times the comfort zone can be healthy. It could also be very unhealthy where you're in a situation where you're like, oh, this is familiar. And then you don't push your boundaries. You don't push yourself out of that. And so you kind of just maintain this this level that's Part, I mean, it's it's partly stoked by fear, right? It's like that fear of yeah. the unknown or that fear of pushing yourself or like like for you to go to quit that situation of being in emergency medicine to then say like, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna move on to something else. There's a different path I'm going to take now. I mean, that's pretty brave. Mm. Yeah, I think that you have to close one door before others open. So I've started writing. Um, I'm having some acting lessons. I'm just trying to expand my creative brain. And although, you know, obviously I've got a, a scientific side to me, um, I think creativity is what will make me happy in, in the end. Um, working for myself, doing my own thing rather than dancing to somebody else's tune um, in a stressful situation. 
Yeah. So, I mean, it's all about development and different things and life doesn't have to be the same path. You can, you can come to crossroads and, and cross over to the other side of the road and see what's, what's there, you know, otherwise you'll, you'll just be meandering along in life and, and to not have different experiences and the people I've met through our, through improv and on zoom since the lockdown and you know I, I'd never have met them before and you know it's such a wonderful community and very supportive have you your whole life have you had that philosophy and that attitude or is it something that you've recently discovered or have you did you start I feel like sometimes we start off with that kind of attitude of being open and traveling down your path and then that gets removed from our lives and some people get back to it eventually also sometimes people maintain it their whole life and sometimes people never get back to it do you feel like you've had that that kind of curiosity your whole life I think I began with that curiosity as a child and then lost it as I yeah. had a career and then I've discovered it again so I've I'm a very shy person and um, so the idea of performing would Terrif you know, that's a terrifying thing for me. Being yeah. on here is a terrifying thing for me. Yeah. Um, so, but that's okay. I think you've got to scare yourself <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's true. We say like an improv, we say follow the fear, which is like, yeah. you know, and you, if you look at your life when you feel like when you're not performing or you feel like not, um, you know, you're not doing something that terrifies you. There are still moments that are pretty terrifying, but but you're more used to it or you're more um, able to, through experience or, or through the situation, you're able to still do it. And now this is just a different channel to yeah. evolve and grow. Yeah, exactly that. So, you know, I'm looking forward to getting better at it or getting, or not being so nervous, I'd say, is the thing because I can, I can, write um very quickly as a comedy scene i even did stand up on leave it or not but then i know what i'm going to say then don't i i've got a script i've written it i've thought about it but so uh, putting yourself in front of people and then just having to just do something and your brain stops your mouth from working and then you and then you come away from you go i should have said this i should have said that i should have done you know so the skill is learning the skill of not letting things block your block your line of thought and just letting it flow um which people do so well uh, and i've got great admiration for there are some brilliant improvisers um so i don't think i'll ever attain that level but i would encourage everyone to have have a go and put themselves under a bit of pressure and just go with it and have fun with it and it should be accessible to everybody really I mean, it is funny if you like stepping back and you, and it's just is, is such a sign of human, our behavior. You were in a very high stressful position that involved life and death, it sounds like. Yeah. But doing something in front of people can be more terrifying. Yeah, I agree. With the stakes so, right? The stakes so much lower. But when I feel like when you're doing it, you're, this what we do with with improv is you are opening yourself up to being very vulnerable yeah and that can be a lot more terrifying than i'm in a situation where someone literally can die you know that you're, you're you've got the tools that that's probably not going to happen but it is it is at the end of the day it's, it's a situation that may happen i'm sure you've experienced that but to then go into this unknown and open yourself up to yeah. because it's also like you said you sit there and you'll go, I could have done this or that, but it's like, really, you couldn't have because you did the thing that you did. And exactly. yeah. you can't change, you can't change the thing that you did. Mm. Yeah, that's right. But it's, uh, it's a good experience. And, uh, you know, it, I think it helps, it helps your brain develop. You've got a, a lot of, you know, your brain is highly plastic, neuroplasticity. Yeah, uh, so yeah. you're not just the product of you, it just you don't stop learning you don't stop stop developing you can you can forge a creative brain and get better no matter um you know even 
if it's something you've not done before, you can create that within your brain and reinforce those circuits. Um, you know, you can be whatever you want at the end of the day if you just let it happen and don't put blocks in the way of it. Um, were you also, speaking of being creative, are you a photographer or do you take photos? Yeah, yeah, I'm a, I do it on, on, at an amateur level. So I've got a nice, well, I've got a, an entry level camera. Uh, I'd, I love taking pictures and, and, and just, you know, I don't do anything much with them. I just post them on Facebook. <laughs> But I do love to, I do love uh, taking photographs. I like I like the uh, looking at an image and and seeing where the eye leads and looking at the unusual an unusual aspect of something. Um, yeah, it is a, a thing I love to do. You you know what the next logical step in your progression might be? Filmmaker. Ah. Uh. <laughs> making films yeah. yeah i mean i do i write a lot of um scripts and stuff um so i've got an idea for films and that so but yeah directing films would be interesting well yeah you've got, <laughs> right being i mean having the seeing things through a lens being mm. able to tell stories see where it goes like using your med like that's all and there are so many examples of like photographers who have gone on to become film directors because they can see things visually and, and tell a story. And so mm -hmm. it's, uh, and, and the only difference you say, I, I like, you're like, I'm, I'm an amateur photographer. And you know, the only difference between being an amateur photographer and a professional one is, do you know what I think the only difference is? Yeah, go on. You just, just saying it. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Right? It's like, well, I'm, a, I'm a professional photographer. It's like, okay, like, I think people, I think people look for, like, especially like in my, in my field of improv, people are like, they want to know what the, when they get to that level where it's like a, a veteran improviser or a professional or whatever. And it's like, oh, you, you say it as soon as you feel it. If you mm -hmm. feel you're that way. Like, I've worked with people for or I've known people for 30 years that I would never be in a scene with because I just, I know their style and it's not, it doesn't work for me. And I know people that I've played with that have never done an improv class before where I'm like, oh, I jump on with them in a minute as well. So it's like, who's to say that the person A is the professional, person B is not the mm -hmm. professional. Yeah, exactly. I suppose if, if you back yourself, you can, you know, you can do it. Oh, it's, it's, I feel like, <laughs> Helen, Helen the, the older I get, the more I feel like life's just about confidence levels. I think it is. I think you're right, to be honest. You literally should just jump into whatever you feel like doing. It's soon yeah. over, isn't it? Yeah, it's exactly like, you know, this ride doesn't go long. And exactly. at the end of the day, it's like the people, to me, the people who go, I don't really care if I make mistakes. I'm probably going to, but I'm going this way for a bit, and then I'm and then, then I'm going to go this way. I think those people are probably getting more out of life because mm -hmm. they're not letting they're not letting that voice inside of them stop them. Which then that voice gets amplified when one person says, "Oh, you're this," and you go, oh, "See, they're right." And it's like, well, they don't they don't know you, but you're believing they are because of our insecurity. So the people that are like, "I'm going to do this," and I'm going to say, you know. Am I a filmmaker? Yeah, I'm going to say I'm a filmmaker. I've made films. I've, I've taken my video camera on my phone and I've recorded video clips. I'm a filmmaker, right? Now, we don't have to compare what level we are in that situation, but it's a matter of, and what your story from what I've heard now, you're, you're embracing that. We are like, I'm going, to, I'm going to get off this part of my life and I'm going to hop on this part. I'm not sure where this is going, but I'm going to do that for a bit and then I'll see something else and I'll be open for those, those changes. Yeah, exactly. I think that's what you have to do. I think people bog themselves down with expect the expectations yeah. as well. That you, you, you know, you, you're pressurized, and you're in an institution from the age of what five through to when you retire. You have to get up. But literally, you're institutionalized, aren't you? Like a yes. robot. Yeah. You know, five years old, you go to school, and you are never out of an institution until you're what. 60 something now yeah. and even then you're you're transitioned to that retirement institution 
So in a way you're, you're, you're in a more of a metaphorical, I guess, institution, but I think you're, you're right. It's like for your mm -hmm. whole life, you go through that. And then at a certain point, you 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 can say, "Hey, wait a minute, nah, I'm I'm gonna be fine. It's very scary. I'm gonna stop the thing I've been doing, which people tell me I should do. I'm gonna stop that. I'm gonna be okay. I'm gonna take a breath. <laughs> I'm gonna just focus on being as present as possible and be open up for what's the next exciting chapter in my life." And I I saw once somebody said, "Add the phrase to anything you're scared of doing." add the phrase at the very end, but I love it. So it's like, oh, I got to get a new job, but I love it. Like if you add that phrase, pretty soon your brain starts believing it and then it becomes oh, less it's scary. programming again. It's that neural programming. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's about taking chances and the difference between success and failure is, you know, that tenacity, that keeping us it, that it's easy to give up. It's easy to walk away. Yeah. You know, it's, you shouldn't do what's easy you should do what's hard at the end of the day i think i think so i think you're you're right on it's like and not only is it easy to give up but there are people also who are rooting for you to give up and, and they might be well meaning they might be like well you should like the in my situation of like thankfully i had parents who were not like well you should get a a quote real job it's like no what what i'm doing is a real job it's a real it's it's a real job and there's a lot of people who would tell you well you should quit and stop and so on and so forth and it's like no like this is what brings me the most pleasure and i've learned it's taken me a long time to learn like this is it and i look back and it's like i've had a career doing this it's not just like a an extended and glorified hobby it's like no it's a career so is it hard sure but then there are moments where the reward is so much better i can't I, I remember I would see people go every day to these high rise office buildings and I'd be like, oof, that would just, I could, I can't do that. That would kill me if every day, but some people love doing it. Some people that's, that's their thing. So don't, um, what most of my friends says, don't yuck my yum. And I think that's really good. It's like, Hey, if you don't agree with it, that's cool. But just don't, don't be a wet blanket. Don't yuck my yum. You do your thing. I'll do my thing. And then, uh, you know, you, you, the older you get, I feel like the more you ex examples you see of, oh, I want to hang out with these people that help raise me up and not the people that bring me down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, where, if people want to follow what you're doing, if they want to reach out to you or things like that, what's the, what's the best way they can, can do it? Is it Facebook? Uh, well, I've got a Twitter account with my photographs that I toss up. Um, I can't even remember what it's called now. <laughs> but I do. I'm not a social media person. I know I'm on it, but um, I'm literally, I'm an analog woman. Uh, you, are, you are such an artist because every artist for the most part is like, I got this. I don't know what it is unless it's our names. We just, we don't always want to talk about, even though we should, we don't want to talk about ourselves or market ourselves in any way. We just want to create I, the I art. But when I eventually finish it, this, uh, book <laughs> I'll be trying to sell that uh, I can tell you but um, at the moment I'm literally only on Facebook as myself and then uh, my Twitter uh, is Mersey phone pics oh um, cool so you can look at my photographs but other than that I don't really promote myself uh, doing anything in particular at the moment um, are your <laughs> photos are your photographs for sale uh, photo for me. Uh, there's a website. I upload my photographs on there. Again, uh, Mersey Picks is my handle for that. <laughs> well, that's perfect. So I sold um, one. I sold one. <laughs> so you, wait a minute. You sold a photo? I did sell a photograph one. <laughs> you, you are a professional photographer, Helen. You're a professional photographer. You sold one. You are. That's the definition. Yep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was such a blast and I had so much fun improvising with you and talking with you and, and whether it's in person or virtual, I can't wait to play another scene with you again. Thank you so much. I'm going to be so nervous next time. <laughs> I was like a Good. robot and I was like, <laughs> I'll, I'll also try to be not as nervous because I was nervous too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Always. 
always it, the shows I don't get nervous about are the ones I'm I'm concerned with. Okay. You just care. Yeah. When you're nervous, you care. Mm -hmm. That's it. Right. Well, it's been lovely to do this anyway. A great experience. All right. Thank Be you. well. We'll talk soon. <laughs> <laughs>